All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the continuation of the frames and machine uh, part one video. Now this is going to be the part two. Okay. So as I've told you that uh, it is very important. Uh, two force members are very important, and three force members are very important uh, that you might be able to basically uh, find out in your uh, machine mechanisms as they will make your calculations very very easy. Uh, otherwise, your calculations will become more tough. Okay. So you must know what is a two force member. If you look at it, uh, two force member. If an object in equilibrium is subjected to two forces acting at different points, and no other force or couple, uh, couples or moment is acting, it is called a two force member. So this is a very good definition of a two force member. Equilibrium requires that the two forces be equal and opposite and parallel to the line between the two points. This is. an example if you look at it here the two forces uh, are exactly equal they, they are along the same line of action okay and uh, if you look at it uh, their magnitude is, is uh, along the one axis is positive and in the opposite axis it is minus f but uh, uh, their directions are opposite their magnitude are exactly the same so this is a two force member another example if you look at it uh, this is another example of a two force member okay so the, any member uh, like this having uh, two forces equal in magnitude opposite in direction could be treated as a two force member if you look over here this is a concurrent force system they are they are from a concurrent force system and you can make a resultant of of, of this uh, solve the re uh, resultant take out the resultant of this concurrent force system and same with this and you will get uh, again a two force member okay you will again get a two force member provided it has the same magnitude here here and the direction will should be opposite the direction of the resultant here should be opposite and the direction of the resultant over here same magnitude so two force members again and it's not necessary it, it's, it's a, it can be a, you can find you have to find out any shape any shape two force members the line of action of the two force always be the line directly between the two connection points like here this is a two force member okay it can be like this also two force member an l section is shown you you can also make the a two force member consider like this if as two uh, pins over here and you can treat it as a two force member okay then there is sometimes you can also have a uh, to find out a three force member in a, in a machine uh, mechanism so if an object is in equilibrium is subjected to three forces acting at different points okay uh, and no other force are coupled okay is acting on it it is called a three force member okay but the equilibrium requires it three forces be coplanar like if you look over here this is a coplanar force system okay on uh, basically uh, you have x and y okay a coplanar force system it's not a 3d force system and either they must be parallel the forces must be parallel or they should be concurrent okay the forces are all concurrent this like this is a concurrent force system or The, these forces are parallel to each other. Okay, uh, so if you want to see, this is a, if you want to look a three-force member. Okay, this is an example of a three-force member. This is an example of a three-force member. From here, we can reduce this. Okay, so again, an example of uh, two-force members is very important to understand. Okay, if you look at it here. Uh, you have basically uh, a a dredger machine heavy heavy equipments heavy mechanical equipments over here you can see this member if you look at it uh, this member if you look at this member here see if you see the shape is not exactly straight but these two the pin connected members a and b we can basically treat them this member when we do force analysis here we will say this is simply a two force member okay and we for if you look at it this member like this okay if you okay. okay like we can assume it like this and uh, Right 
okay, so anything like this it comes we can say like okay. this will become a two post member sorry this will be P, P plus, and this will be minus P, two post member. Same way here, if you look at it, uh, this is another very common example at construction sites. If you go, very common example at construction sites, uh, this AB will be treated as a post member. Here, if you look, this is a, some sort of same bracket, we can treat it as a force member FA and FB, provided they have the FA equals to FB. And seeing this L section, cross section is shown you over here. If you look at it, here is FA and it's FP. We assume that FA and FP have the same magnitude but opposite direction. Okay. In case of a column, when column is there, we assume it is under compression. Okay. It can treat it, it could be treated as a uh, two force member. Okay. Same with cables. Okay, cables are always basically we'll assume they will always be under tension. Okay, we can never assume cable to be under compression. Very important assumption. Okay, so here they have shown you considered as a two force member provided and, and and very important we will basically neglect the weight of these members. Okay, uh, and again we'll treat them as uh, rigid bodies. Okay, uh, and basically there will be no deformations. Again, identifying two force members, two force members, force, how do you identify that is a very important point, okay. You have to basically, like how do you identify this is a two force member in a machine, how do you identify this is a two force member, this is very important. The forces applied are at only two points on the member, included uh, reactions and external forces, okay. So the forces will always be applied at two points on that member, there will be no couple movement on that member okay this is very important you will say that there will be no couple movement on that member there will be no couple movement okay you will assume uh, there will be no couple movement on that member okay and there will be no external force acting also okay so this is very important member is considered weightless again uh, we will uh, that the weight of the member we will not consider okay like this is your couple movement maybe this is your external force this is your external force this is your couple movement this is your weight okay so if this is there it will be not a two force member it will not be a two force member this is very important that you have to take into account that it is not a two force member so this is uh, how you identify your respective two force members again uh, whenever a two force member are there basically you have to draw the fbd of that well, sorry whenever a frame is there or a machine is there you have to draw the fbd fbd is very important a correct fbd okay so if you look at over here they have basically what have they shown you here if you look at it they have this is a, a, a frame is shown to you a frame they have shown you a frame okay and uh, they have drawn the free body diagram of this frame okay you cannot calculate uh, the frame do the frame analysis uh, directly because if you look at it uh, here this is a fixed support this is a fixed support over here and this is if you look at it uh, this is the weight acting downwards this is cable I've told you the cable has to be in tension okay and then this uh, this uh, uh, curve beam this is a curve beam that have placed over here is being fixed at point E okay it is being fixed at this point okay if you look at it this point uh, at E, it will have two reactions EX and EY. It will have two reactions EX and EY over here. 
now uh, the very important point is that uh, if you look at it here if you look at it here if you just look at it here okay uh, Okay, just here at point E. See the direction of E Y and E X, and see the direction of E X and E Y. Okay, because this was a common uh, joint pinned, and uh, whatever direction we have assumed, this direction has to be totally opposite, and it's mandatory that it has to be opposite. Okay, because this is an internal force; it has to be in equilibrium. Okay, then if you look at it, uh, this G F. Is basically a cable, and okay, and you know it is being acted as a two force member. You can treat it as a two force member in tension. Always, you can you know, make it a compression because cable. Then, if you look at it over here, uh, the weight is acting downwards, and then if you look this D E, okay, this D E has the weight W C acting over here, okay, then this uh, uh, D E. This DE is again a cable, so it is under tension. This is very important. Then this DB is being connected with the cable. If you look at it, and uh, if it is being connected with the cable, we have assumed that this is the direction of TDE. We assume this as the direction of TDE. This is the weight acting, and again this is point B, again which is the pin, uh, pin joint B Y B X, and see it is opposite to that. So the weight is acting downwards, and uh, very important if you look at this point, this is basically a fixed support. So a fixed support would have three reactions: A X, A Y, and M. Again, you can assume the direction of this uh, fixed support. It is up to your choice uh, over here. Okay. So this is uh, uh, how basically you do your uh, frame analysis. Okay, and I will basically uh, leave you as a challenge to. An aircraft service vehicle is there, and this is basically the free body diagram of this. Uh, again, this is a machine. This is, a, if you look at it, this is a mach machine. Free body diagram of a, this is a machine, and this is machine free body diagram. Okay, this is the machine free body diagram. Okay, very. Uh, this is a challenge. You must do it yourself. Okay, so let's uh, do some practical applications. Here again. Now analyze the frame to calculate the unknown forces at pins A, C, and joint P. Okay. So all the knowledge that we have gathered, we are going to apply it over here. Okay. So it, uh, if you we go step by step very easily. So I, as I have told you, can I solve this problem directly? Uh, I will try to solve it. I will say uh, how many unknowns will be here. If you look at it, there will be two unknowns. Okay. The unknowns will be two. Two unknowns, okay. And if you look at it uh, here also, there will be two unknowns. And you know how many unknowns are there? Two unknowns. Two unknowns. There will be two unknowns. So can we solve it? Six unknowns. Total. We have six unknowns. We have six unknowns. And uh, how many equations of equilibrium? Equations of equilibrium is three. So we cannot solve. We cannot solve this thing. We cannot solve this frame. So, what should we do in order to solve this frame? This is very important. If you look at here, okay, how we are going to solve it now? If you look, we are going to uh, break it into its respective uh, parts. Okay, one leg is here. It's a two-leg frame. We'll break it from uh, point B. Okay, here we have broken it from it from point. Uh, a, uh, from point B. Okay. So again, this is our pin. This is AX. Pin will have two reactions, AX and AY. At point P, you can see it will again have two reactions. Again, we, if we are doing this analysis uh, here, basically we uh, we can assume directions AX and AY. Here we can assume direction BX BY, 
and you can assume okay you can all assume these directions but these are if you start from a b okay and uh, you have to say that you have assumed you have basically assumed okay now this direction mandatory directions mandatory directions okay mandatory directions cannot assume cannot assume okay this is mandatory directions so this is how we have broken the frame okay the pin have two uh, unknowns here and it has also two unknowns over here okay so what we will do we'll start first of all try to calculate uh, basically what are the uh, forces acting at joint p okay so what we will do here is basically equating moments at a and c to zero so we will say summation of all the moments at a it's always beneficial to first of all calculate bx and by okay so what we will do at point a if we do summation because again if you look at it we cannot solve it still because there will be two unknowns here and two unknowns here in the equations of equilibrium how many equations of equilibrium do we have if you look at it we have three equations of equilibrium four unknowns okay still we have to be very careful how we will going to start approaching it so in order to we will try to calculate one of the components bx and by uh, uh, first of all the horizontal component and then the vertical component okay so <coughs> we say summation of all the moments at a equal to 0 okay we say summation of all the moments at a equal to 0 and this is our point a okay when we say so we will get bx again okay, this bx into uh, 0.4 okay this is very important so this is bx into 0.4 and again we have assumed that we are taking moments uh, this is we are taking moments as anti-clockwise moments as positive okay so bx into 0.4 uh, plus and again if you look at it this force this bx uh, when and our moment uh, point is this one so it, this bx will going to take the, uh, this leg in the direction which is opposite to the clockwise direction so bx and it's positive and if you look at it this by also has the potential to basically take this leg in a direction which is anti-clockwise so by into 0.4 what about this uh, force external force 1000 newton it is definitely going to take it in, uh, in the clockwise direction okay and again since we have assumed that anti-clockwise moment are positive so this will become negative okay so you got uh, bx into 0.4 plus by into 0.4 minus 1000 into 0.2 okay and then we will take we will come here and we will take summation of all the moments at c okay this is going to be the point we are going to take the moments at c and again if you look at it uh, we were assuming that anti-clockwise moment are we were assuming that anti-clockwise moment are positive okay we will assume that the anti-clockwise moment are positive so what we do b uh, we say bx into 0.4 okay this component bx into 0.4 this is bx into 0.4 but if you look at it it is going to uh, this bx is going to take the body in the if you look at it in the uh, clockwise direction so this is going to be a negative sign will come here now you go to by okay this by is the force and the perpendicular distance is again we're going to treat it as uh, 0.4 okay so if you look at it it is going to be b sorry by is going to be a perpendicular distance is uh, 0.2 if you look at it this is 0.2 and this is 0.4 so it is going to be 0.6 okay by into 0.6 plus if you and again plus sign why because this by is going to take the body looks it the leg is fixed here so it is going to take us in which direction it is going to take us in the clockwise direction so it is going to be uh, this by 
is it is going to take us in the anti clockwise direction this by is taking us in anti clockwise direction so it is positive okay it is positive and then this 500 newton force again it is uh, the, the leg is fixed at c this 500 newton force is also going to take us in which direction in the anti clockwise direction so it, again it is going to be positive okay so if you look at it uh, we have two simultaneous situations being formed in bx and by bx and by okay so you can very easily solve them and you will get uh, uh, bx equals to 0 and by is equals to 500 okay your bx will be equals to bx comes out to be equals to 0 and by is equals to this is by is equals to 500 meter okay now this is being solved now what are the leftovers we have ax ay and cx cy we have to calculate it okay so now we go here okay we have calculated uh, bx and by so now we apply the equations of equilibrium to bar ab okay if we apply a for ab you will see that you have now two unknowns over here so very easy you don't need to apply uh, the moment i simply apply here sigma fx equals to 0 okay here we apply sigma fx equal to 0 okay this is the positive x axis so this is ax towards the uh, if you want we can just make it like this uh, to make our uh, understanding more better uh, okay, this is our x and this is our y okay this is, this is positive y this is this is positive x so ax and again this uh, was this and what our, uh, our bx is basically minus 500 if you look at it this is ax and our bx is basically 500 and uh, if you look at it uh, in the previous if you look at it uh, what we have here is was uh, if we see it properly uh, this was our b uh, b y and this was our b x was 0 and b y was 0 ok so there is a mistake here just uh, rectify it that uh, here we will write that uh, your b x that you have calculated is basically this is again you can just calculate it here that this is b y b y is equal to 0 and this is your b x b x equals to 500 newtons ok so b y equal to 0 this is b y equal to 0 and uh, b y equal to 0 b x equals to 500 newtons so when we come here now we have calculated it so you would say ax uh, minus 500 this is ax and this is bx bx is again you know is basically 500 but the direction is towards the negative x so you get ax equals to 500 newtons so you, you got your ax now you apply sigma fy when you apply sigma y you got ay is an unknown towards the positive y and if you look at it uh, by you know already is 0 and what is the third force which is uh, minus 1000 and you remember this was your by this was your by so from here you will calculate a y as you will calculate your a y as 1000 newton now again you apply and solve for this member bc you solve for this member bc so you again apply the equations of equilibrium to bar bc you have already calculated bx and by you need to calculate cx and cy uh, you have uh, three equations and basically you can simply directly use the sigma fx equation of uh, equilibrium and sigma fy so you apply sigma fx to 0 this is your positive x okay this is your positive x so you will write it as your equation as uh, you know bx is 500 so this is 500 the direction of cx towards the negative x this is minus cx equal to 0 so you get cx equals to 500 newton you apply sigma fy equal to 0 when you apply sigma fy equal to 0 you will get cy towards the positive y axis minus 
and uh, what was by by is basically uh, 500 but it is towards the negative y axis you write minus 500 okay uh, uh, sorry cy and uh, you know the by was basically zero this is again your uh, by by was zero here yeah. and uh, if you look at it this 500 newton force is again towards the uh, negative y okay so this was your c y and this is your uh, b y this is your b y if you look at it this is uh, this is your b y this is your b y and this is the external 500 newton force both are minus because they are in the negative y axis so from here you can very easily calculate your c x as 500 newton okay and from here you can very easily calculate uh, your c y as 500 newton so they are more very typical uh, to analyze uh, a frame uh, so you have to be very careful when solving uh, frame analysis and when machines uh, uh, analysis and numerical system you have to be even more careful so this is how you basically solve uh, your uh, frame analysis we will try to take more complicated frame and machine analysis in our future uh, numericals okay so thank you very much